Hi, I'm John from Just Whiskey. If you like today's show, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And consider becoming a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month with the link in the description below. And thanks so much for the few Patreons that I do have that help support the channel. Much appreciated. And remember, folks, it's Just Whiskey. Today, we're going to be <clears throat> talking about and reviewing the most latest long row 15-year-old um, Pinot Noir finished 15-year-old um, in their ongoing wine finish series. <clears throat> and as a comparison, I brought along the, uh, the 2020 release of the Long Row Red 13-year-old <clears throat> um, Chilean Cabernet Sauvignon from 2020. Um, I've previously reviewed this Long Row uh, Red 13-year-old, so you can go back in the archives to get a full review on it. Today we're going to be focusing on the newest release, Long Row 15, Pinot Noir Finish 2022, 51.4% ABV, um, aged 11 years in ex-bourbon, and another four years in New Zealand Pinot Noir um, casks. And normally I don't review samples, but I thought it was um, equitable since I have a full bottle of this. So this was um, given to me by a member of a whiskey group that I'm in. And uh, so it's not a company sample. It's uh, swapped to me from a, from a, a friend of a whiskey group. All right. Um, we're going to get into the review now of the Long Row 15... 2022 all right it, you're gonna as i'm describing this you you're gonna hear comparisons to this as well and then i'm going to get into this 13 year old a little bit later on the nose dense medicinal um this is more funky and farmyard funky than the other one getting grape wax soda like those wax soda candies with the artificial grape juice in it earthy peat a little bit of diesel some dirty socks okay this is um this is a more interesting than the 13 year old okay um and the legs too the legs are much more thicker on a long row 15. All right, let's get into the palate. Viscous, syrupy, berry fruits. It's rich. It's sweet, but then it quickly transcends to an astringency. So you're getting that sweet and bitter. Lots of oak spice in here. Um, there's a flint note in there, but not sulfury at all. But there's definitely a, a, a flint note in there. This is a power. This packs a powerful punch. Um, by no means is it hot, but this is ballsy robust uh, mm. um, the finish is long um, dry astringent mouth puckering that the there's there's a cigarette cigar ash that lingers in the uh, the very end of the finish And it's definitely a mouth-numbing experience. <laughs> um, this is not. This is very interesting. Not an everyday drinker. Um, this is a powerful, ballsy, complex uh, offering. Um, I'm not sure on the price. 
and does it really matter anyway because they're they're just ridiculous prices if you can find them um, for my enjoyment and the quality that's in here um, is and and I've you know been adjusting my scores in the last year to be a little more on the more conservative side okay um, so when you go if you go to look and, and, and compare this long wheel 13 I don't remember what I gave a score for that but in comparison apples and oranges what we have here maybe to put it into perspective of what I'm going to give this as a score maybe knock down this down maybe a point or two okay um, so for my enjoyment and what's going on here um, uh, respectable 86 to 87 I'm sure other people would would rate it higher the quality is there but I am in my journey I'm gravitating a kind of away from wine finishes in general um, yeah so we'll, we'll leave it at that now to give a, a, a general comparison to the long road 13 this is from 2020 comes in at 51.6 so it's actually a higher ABV than the Long Row 15, but, okay, now this, this bottle's been open for quite a while, okay? So take that into consideration. Um, but this has been open for two years, and I haven't killed it yet, but that's because I have so many bottles, you know? Um, and then I'm going to tell you at the very end, and, and very quickly, another minute or two, what I think about the just the the long row NAS non age stated uh, core range compared to these two. All right, so the long row thirteen again. Look for the review, but the nose is um, lighter and brighter, a bit thinner. Believe it or not, more of an alcohol nip on the nose, even though it's been open for a long time. Much less funk on the long row 13 it's again brighter lighter hmm. brighter lighter more of the more of a whiny notes um, not sherry but whiny notes and I'll just leave it at that um, the finish is more of a medium finish and it's a bit sharper a bit nippy more nippy on this but not hot and also on the on the palette I've got more of that um, that chalky candy cigarette um, sensation going on um, so they're they're both very different the the long row 15 Pinot Noir is very ballsy funky dense well you heard my review it's it's got a lot more oomph the 13 year old is a little bit more delicate nuanced however a bit sharper and a little bit more of that alcohol bite so maybe the casks were you know the finishing casks on this were maybe i don't I'm just speculating maybe second fill and maybe these Pinot Noir were maybe first fill. Not, <clears throat> I don't know for sure. Um, personally, I would gravitate to the long row NAS, non-age stated core range. Um, and the price is a lot cheaper and it's more accessible. Um, but these are interesting um, for sure. But not an everyday drinker, whereas the long row non-age stated uh, core range could be more of a, a of a daily drinker it's it's more accessible i think and it's sweeter and uh silkier and uh i don't have one open right now but i've i've had two or three <laughs> bottles over the over the past few years all right we're gonna i don't want to go on too far hope you like the review remember folks it's just whiskey if you liked it please give it a thumbs up like and subscribe and consider becoming a patreon having said all that 
hats off to you all and take care folks